Why hello there everybody. I am going to show you how to make digital homemade trading cards. So what I have is from the Game Crafter, the homemade trading card template. This is the poker card size, and so I think that is the best one to use. Um, you can either get it from the Game Crafter, or I'll put a direct link in the description below so you can just download it easy. So we go ahead and we open this up, and the first thing you want to do is create a new layer. This is GIMP, by the way. So if you don't have GIMP, look it up. It's a free program to use. It's really awesome. Now, I always like to create a new layer because you don't ever want to edit the base itself because you want to use that in case you need to look back at it. So create a new layer and start from the new layer. Now come up and select your square tool. And we're going to select the region that's in the blue dash. You can zoom in. You can hold down left control and then scroll in and out with your mouse to zoom. And you just want to make it so it lines up about in the middle of the blue. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You just get it about. This, by the way, will also give you a chance to make a template that you can use over and over again for the cards. So you only have to do this once. So I'll show you at what point you stop, save it, and use them for, as, uh, for a template. So we already got that selected, and now we've got to decide if we're going to just make this all white. And that's what we're going to do. So I have the layer above it, and I just fill it all in in white. Then I go select, invert, and this you will choose to be your border. I like black best, but you can choose whatever you want. I like black because I like the accentuated highlight color. It's got contrast, and I like the extreme contrast. So we got that, and we can go select none. Now let's go ahead and do a new layer again. Now we're going to do the, uh, the lines right here for your text and dial or whatever it might be. Now let's see, if you look down, I don't know if you can see down at the bottom, it says rectangle and then it, has, it says 707 by 25. You can use that to adjust uh, the width of this. I like to make it about 20 but you can choose wherever you want. So just remember they will all be 20. Now go ahead and fill that in. Now you can actually just duplicate that layer. So I right clicked on it and then clicked duplicate layer. It makes another one. And you can just click and drag that down to wherever you want it. Now I'm going to duplicate it again because I'm going to want one more. I'm going to put it right about, mm, right about here. Okay. Now we're going to make the next one. Again, use the new selecting. Let's go ahead and do new layer. And let's go like this. Let's also make it 20. So it says 304. Let's go oh, 19, 20, 20. Got it. OK. Fill that in. Let's duplicate the layer again. And let's move that one down here. You can put it where you want. I like a little offset. I'm basing this off of the layout of my own home trade cards, the ones I like the best. But you know, you can do this as you wish, however these you need to be blocked out. Okay, so we've got that all in. Now the next thing is to merge all these down, if you've got them where you want them. So right click and just go merge down, merge down. What you're doing is all these little lines are merging down onto this layer right here. Merge down. Merge down and merge down. Great. Now, let's see, select none. Making sure I'm not selecting anything. Now the next thing is you want to take your magic wand, click this layer right here, and then delete. Hit delete on your keyboard. Boom. Great. Now this is the point where you will probably want to save it as a template. So click and don't export as you're not making an image, you're making a GIMP file. So click save, and then this will always be available to use as a template wherever you need it. In my case, since I have element types, I will have you know four of them. I'll have one that's fire, one that's water, one that's plant, one that's earth. But this is just the base one. So we've got that in. Now we can take our wand again, and we're going to select this one, then hold down shift and select the other ones. And let's say we're going to do a fire. So let's select a color. Now, when you're doing color where there's text going to be over it, one thing you want to make sure is it's not deep, deep red. You want to make it very, very bright. So it'll actually look pink. 
Okay. But that gives the impression of fire. Select none. Great. Now we're able to go and get our images that we're going to use. Now I just found two free images on Pixabay. Which are free to use even for commercial purposes without credit. Now if you were um, drawing your own, suppose you did it digitally, you can just paste it right in like I did here. Or um, if you were to do it by hand, you could scan it or take a picture of it and upload it to your computer and then put it on that way. So I have this image. I just control A, control C. I'm going to paste it right in here. As soon as I do, oh, you always make sure you right click it and click to new layer. Now we're going to scale this layer. So layer, scale layer, and I'm just going to guess. Let's do 500. Is that a good guess? That was a bad guess. Okay, let's try again. Let's do 900. That'll work. It doesn't have to be exact. Okay, then click it and move it down to here. So it's like this. Now we have our other image. Um, so this one's already cut out, but if you were wondering how to cut it out yourself, if it wasn't already, click this right here, this lasso tool. And then you just go around selecting what you want to cut out, like this. I'm doing this fast because this is just a tutorial. This is really bad. <laughs> I would spend more time going around all the edges. You can even zoom in so you can see better. Oh man, that was bad. I usually do this slower, but I'm going fast. And then once you get to the end, you, you connect the two dots. Boom. Then control C. Come back to your image. Control V. And then to new layer. And that's how you would paste in oh, your object like that. See? Well, we're going to come back because we already got what we want. Select none. Um, but we are going to use our lasso tool, and we're just going to make sure that we only select the dragon right here. Great. Control C, come over here. Control V, right click to new layer. Now I've got our dragon in. I think it should be a little bit bigger. Um, a little tip for when you're making creatures. Um, usually the stronger it is, the bigger you typically want it to look on here. If it were weak, I would make it smaller and, and you know, on this page. It just gives the impression of being a weaker beast. You don't have to. That's not a hard, fast rule. That's just a general rule that kind of just helps the feel of it. So we've got that beast in there, and we can leave it right there if we want. Or if we want it to stand out, we can make sure we select that layer. Go Layer, Transparencies, Alpha Selection. Try that. I'll show that again in case that was too fast. Layer, transparency, alpha to selection. So it selects that layer. And then go, select, grow, and let's do six. Yeah. Now let's right click this layer right here and go new layer. We're going to make this layer right here. So we're not selecting the layer of the dragon, it's a blank layer just underneath it. Then we can just paint it with black. And that highlights it. Now if you don't like that and you'd rather do white, that works too. Okay, we've got that in there. Now to do the text, I'm going to click on this. And down here we're going to choose our size and our font. We're going to do size 44. Um, I've chosen Font Helvetica. If you're wondering what the standard, the general font is that's used for trading cards and not in the world, it's not the same everywhere, but generally most of them use, will use Helvetica. So if you don't know what font to use, just know you can't go wrong with Helvetica. And that's what I use too. So select Helvetica. We've got size 44. We can up to 45 if we want. And go ahead and click and drag. Now we can start entering in our details, our information. We're going to call this cave dragon. You know what? I shouldn't use white. Let me select it back to black. Okay. Oh, that didn't work. Sorry. Let me try this again. Okay. This should work now. Oh, let's delete this text layer. So I want to start over. Okay, here we go. Make sure it's black. Cave dragon. You can type that in, and then you can 
use these box edges to click and drag it so it's centered. I'm going to do a new one over here. This is fire because he's a fire critter. And again, just drag it a little bit until it's centered. Then you can come down here, you can do like damage, six, health, six. Center that. Right here I can do the cost. If that's the way your game functions, you know. In my game he would cost 11, because the way I determine that is I do damage plus health minus one. And I do minus one because I find it increases the efficiency of the gameplay. You know, you can even go like this. Watch. I'm going to do rare. Suppose it's a game where you have rarity in your game. You could put it right there. Rare, cost 11, damage 6, health 6. Okay. Now we can come over here and type our description. The cave dragon lives deep on underground waiting for foolish cave dwellers to enter its do domain and now we've got a description okay so there we have it we have our card and anytime we want we can come and See if we, if we select our layers and select opacity, we can bring it down and see what used to be underneath. That's just to make sure we're still lined up if we want. That's why I always keep that layer like that. Anyways, that's it. Um, and now you know how to create your own digital homemade trading card. If you have questions or if you'd like a tutorial that's a little different, just ask me in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. Okay, thanks guys. Bye.